So it is by popular demand I find myself recording another chemistry video, and what better topic to break down than the electrolysis of sodium chloride. Now there are two ways of doing this. We can use molten sodium chloride, the advantage being that we can obtain metallic sodium. However, the process is very expensive as it requires temperatures above 801 degrees C, which is the melting point of sodium chloride. The sodium cations travel to the cathode, where each one is reduced by gaining an electron. Hence, the bare reactive metal sodium is produced at the cathode. The chloride anions travel to the anode, where each one is oxidized by losing an electron. For every two atoms of chlorine, a diatomic molecule of chlorine is produced and given off as a gas. Not a very cost-effective way of making chlorine, if I may say so. A much better way to mass-produce chlorine is by electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride solution, also known as brine. When electrolyzed, we obtain chlorine gas at the anode as before, and hydrogen gas at the cathode this time, as the hydrogen cations are reduced and discharged instead of the sodium ions. The sodium ions and hydroxide ions remain in the electrolyte solution to form sodium hydroxide. Let's do it, shall we? On the right, you will see hydrogen gas collecting in the tube, which can be tested later with a squeaky pop test. Whereas on the left, you will see the chlorine gas collecting, which can be tested later by seeing it bleach a damp litmus paper. This is a slow process, as it is being carried out at 3 volts. But we haven't got all day, so I'm going to turn it up a bit. There you go, that's more like it. Skip forward a little, and we can confirm that the solution is alkali thanks to the sodium hydroxide remaining in the electrolyte solution by testing it with a red litmus paper which turns blue. I repeated the experiment, and this time I added some phenolphthalein to the solution to confirm which electrode is which. It might seem a bit counterintuitive that the side where the hydrogen is being produced is turning pink, as the hydrogen ions migrate in this direction. However, bear with me here. This is where hydrogen ions are being removed from the solution, leaving behind hydroxide ions, which make the solution here alkali. In the exam questions, they will show equal volumes of both gases being produced, as does the equation. However, these guys don't live in the real world. You see, chlorine undergoes a disproportionation reaction in water. You have that to look forward to in A-level chemistry. Both of the products it gives are soluble. Therefore, a smaller volume of chlorine is observed being given off at the anode. Anyway, let's assume it happens the way they say, and take a look at the sample question from a past paper. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. And of course the answer is A. They might then go on to ask you what uses do the products of electrolysis have, so let's have a look. Hydrogen can be used in chemical processes like making margarine or ammonia in the harbour process. Chlorine is used for sterilising water, making hydrochloric acid, bleach and plastics. Whereas sodium hydroxide is used for making paper, soap and bleach when added to chlorine. But Mr Shetley, you prodigious master of chemistry I hear you say, what happens if we have a lower concentration of sodium chloride solution? Well, let me enlighten you. This is basically a first come, first serve at the anode. The greater the concentration of the chloride ions, the more likely chlorine gas will be formed. If we use a dilute solution instead, there won't be as many chloride ions available, and it will be the hydroxide ions that will be discharged in the form of oxygen gas at the anode. Do learn this equation, as they will ask for it from time to time.